So if you artificially reduce some number of movements between the hour of six and seven to facilitate the second runway, you actually reduce the number of flights at Dublin Airport to less than the number of flights you had when there was only one runway. It's bonkers and completely ineffective. But this is an area where, yet again, you know, the cycling idiot of uh, our cycling idiot transport minister needs to get involved, but doesn't because, you know, he doesn't want to touch anything to do with transport unless it's two-wheel transport. Um, and the issue should be, tell Fingal County Council, withdraw your notice. Uh, there is noise monitoring in place. Um, and a reasonable compromise with the, the tiny number of residents in St. Margaret is, right, you're going to have your noise protected. We limit the number of movements, but between midnight and 6 a.m., not between 11, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. People don't understand this issue of the, the 6 p.m., the 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. departure window. And we cannot, neither we nor Lingus can move all of our flights. A, because the hour between 7 to 8 a.m. is already full at Dublin Airport. And B, because you've arrived at Sloth at all the, uh, our airports uh, in the UK and all over Europe. So the flights can't move. They either operate or they get cancelled. And then you reduce the overall capacity of Dublin Airport to less than you had when you only had one runway. Which is the kind of efficiency outcome that only a green transport minister could deliver. Right, it's seven years, Michael. Did Was this mishandled, the whole appeals process? Because all the things we're talking about, I was writing about back in 2016. How, how, is, it, how is it allowed to get, uh, go deep into that trench and never come back out again? I mean, I, like, it was mishandled in the sense that, you know, this planning restriction was always idiotic I mean, and never had any effect. But, you know, the, the, the fact that the minister has not taken any action uh, to revise or amend this planning restriction or to require Fingal County Council and Board Panola to amend this planning restriction in the national interest in a sensible way, such as midnight to 6 a.m. instead of 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, is, you know, just more of the kind of policy failure of Eamon Ryan. You know, he's been in the transport minister. I mean, I accept he's an environmental minister. I accept he's a green idiot. But, you know, to have him there as transport minister, he disappeared during the security queues to, uh, last year at Dublin Airport. Pearl Hildegard Nocton was sent out to uh, do what I thought was a reasonable job together with Dawson Phillips at the time in recovering the DA mismanagement. He disappeared during the drones closures at January at Dublin Airport. We still haven't got the drones, even though DA have bought the equipment. It's still not licensed to operate the equipment in July. Uh, because... And um, Muttonhead Ryan uh, referred it off to uh, the comms regulator. What the hell has the comms regulator got to do with it? Uh, and now here we have this absurd uh, planning restriction uh, with a local council issuing an enforcement notice that just six, with six weeks old. I mean, to be fair, it's more DAA mismanagement of the system. You know, when they opened the second runway last year, we were calling for, as were you and others, we need to have this planning restriction moved because you can't seriously open a second runway at Dublin Airport and then reduce the overall number of flights to less than when you had one runway. What's the worst thing that can happen now with this week, six weeks? Your, your Canary flights arrive home late and you've got, air, you've got something like 44 aircraft based there that have to get out of bed in the, uh, before 6am. So what's the worst thing that can happen if you're told that flights have to go? I think the worst thing that would happen, the worst thing that would happen is a whole swathe of flights will have to be cancelled. Departing flights will have to be cancelled between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. And they can't move because there's no space in the 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. hour, the 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. hour. For them. There's no for them to go. And these flights are being operated on an aircraft that are, is 50% quieter than the aircraft that were operating seven years ago when this planning restriction was first introduced. So you have much quieter aircraft being subjected to a, you know, bizarre and ineffective uh, planning restriction, uh, being agitated for by a tiny number of people in St. Margaret's, uh, you know, bouncing a, a number of idiotic, say, county councillors, some local councillors, into issuing an enforcement notice. But this is a national asset. Dublin Airport in the second runway is a national asset. It is vital to the connectivity, the economic recovery of this country. And it can't be uh, simply um, unilaterally uh, shut down or have flights slashed by, you know, a couple of local residents and a, and, and, and a local county council. 
so are Ryanair, if this comes in in the six week period, are Ryanair going to have to bed their air, cancel those flights and bed their aircraft elsewhere? Well, we, we just have to, well, we can't move the aircraft elsewhere during the summer period. We still have to cancel those flights. There would be mass flight cancellations. Right. Uh, and, you know, the issue of that, that is just the early morning departures. And then what happens in uh, between the hours of 11, 11 to 12 uh, p.m.? You know, there's uh, ATC delays during the day. Yes. Why are running late? Are they not? Yeah. Do we cancel them because they're not allowed back into Dublin Airport? You've like got you'll have people you'll have people arriving back two hours late. So what what do you do? Bring them to Shannon and bust them down. I mean, it's really grim uh, scenarios you're looking at in every direction. Yeah, when in actual fact, if you were doing it as most European airports do on a noise uh, ratio, actually because these flights are all being offered by a much quieter aircraft, it would raise no very little noise issues at all. And the challenge is, the real issue that the residents, and in my view, rightly complain about, is the cargo planes arriving in and out at 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. Now, I have no issue with, you know, cancel cargo flights or move cargo flights to Weston or to Shannon. Who cares? It's only bloody boxes and packages. But you can't have passengers, have families have their summer holidays disrupted by some arcane and ineffective uh, and outdated noise regulation like this. You've got noise problem, uh, noise regulation problems in Amsterdam. Are there other airports that have uh, really pushed to reduce uh, traffic that have impacted on your schedules? No, no airport has pushed to reduce traffic. I mean, uh, every airport is largely, you know, is, is trying to encourage us uh, to, invent, to, offer, to allocate the new aircraft to their airports. I mean, the new aircraft are meaningfully, the, the max uh, aircraft are meaningfully quieter. They're 50% quieter than the NGs, which in turn were nearly 50% quieter than the old, the 200s. Like, yeah. There's been a revolution in noise reduction technology at aircraft. And yet you have these kind of unspecified allegations from a couple of people at St. Margaret's, which get a disproportionate, you know, disproportionate influence on a couple of idiot county councillors in Fingal, for Christ's sake. You know, they, uh, have to have the, they have the benefit of having the airport in their in their uh, council, whatever it is, constituency. Most of the jobs in Fingal are generated by the airport anyway. And you can't have these kind of arbitrary planning issues. Well, you know, uh, to be fair, I don't blame Fingal County Council. I blame Eamon Ryan because our transport minister should have been updating these, uh, these issues when the second runway was opened. He was all very happy to show up at the opening of the second runway and has done nothing since to address this kind of city planning restriction. But for Fingal County Council to come out with a six-week enforcement order that will, you know, massively disrupt uh, flights and passengers at Dublin Airport is unacceptable. And for Dublin Airport to have sat in its hands as it always does, you know, they've been too busy trying to piss away 200 million on a tunnel under a taxiway to, to their cargo aircraft or trying to bid for their, you know, another car park to actually deal with uh, the much more fundamental issue of uh, this idiotic noise restriction on the opening of the second runway. Now, the, the six weeks isn't six weeks for Ryanair because you have to cancel uh, a bit earlier than that under EU 261. At what stage are you yeah, going to be looking at the real issue of cancelling flights if nothing moves on this, Michael? We're looking at it now, but again, we're not quite sure what exactly the restriction will involve. I mean, except that, you know, the DA don't yet know. They can't tell us you know, how many flights you have to reduce. Are you going to reduce the cargo flights? Or are you going to reduce the passenger flights? What exactly is the outcome? They're running around there like heads as chickens as usual. And they spend less time trying to waste money on tunnels and car parks and more time trying to run the airport efficiently and better. We'd all be better off. But they have my sympathy, given that, you know, they're looking for leadership or policy guidance from uh, Eamon Ryan and none is available. Thank you so much, Michael. There's a really, you're really, you're on form and great as always. And catch up soon. Okay, Thank you very much. Solution. I mean, the solution to this, own is move it slightly from 11 to 7. If you moved it to midnight to 6 a.m., most of the issues would be dealt with by just kind of by, by moving cargo flights. Great stuff. Eminently sensible as always. Thank you so much. You're brilliant. Thank you. Great to talk. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.